In a quiet neighborhood on the outskirts of Akron, Ohio, crime is usually the last thing on residents' minds. But on the morning of March 18, 1985, the police get a phone call unlike anything they've ever heard. Detective Sergeant Ken Mifflin is one of the detectives who later worked on the case. We received a call from a male saying that he needed EMS assistance for his wife. First responders race to an apartment building and find a young woman sprawled out on the floor. She was lying at the base of the stairwell. She had a portion of the rope attached to her neck. She was in full cardiac arrest. There was no heartbeat. She had no pulse. She was literally in the throes of death. EMS immediately began working on her. Their urgency is compounded by one horrifying fact. She was nine months pregnant. It's horrible to even think about. The EMS did every life-saving thing that they could. They were able to get a pulse. The woman, identified as 24-year-old Meg Perk, is rushed to the hospital, while her husband, Scott, stays behind to speak to police. Meg was doing great through her entire pregnancy for the first seven or, seven or eight months. But lately, he says, Meg wasn't herself. She was becoming increasingly depressed. Scott tells the police that Meg wasn't feeling real well that morning. They were going to be going to see the doctor. While Scott was taking a bath, he had seen Meg walk by, and he had called out asking her if you were getting dressed yet, and got no response. According to Scott, a short time later, he got out of the bath to check on Meg. Meg was hanging from a rope in the first floor area in the stairwell. None of it made any sense. Could someone have broken in and murdered Meg? When law enforcement responds to the scene of an unexplained death, they always launch an investigation. Police want to make sure that it is a suicide and not a homicide. Investigators walk through every room. There was no forced entry into the house to show that anybody else had been involved. But there are some disturbing details that don't add up. They saw the rope hanging down in the stairwell. The rope was cut in two places, which seemed unusual. Then, they uncover a note in Meg's handwriting. The detectives discovered a letter that Meg had written to her grandma within a day or so of her death. The letter indicated that she was very happy. How could someone who seemed to be so happy all of a sudden try to take their own life. It was a Saturday of spring break at 3.20 in the morning. Our dispatch center for the city of Stowe received a 911 call reporting a fire. The fire department races to the scene. I was fire marshal for the city of Stowe at the time. They found a fully engulfed home with fire on uh, three sides and it was, it was just going full blast. Luckily, the family who lived there, a mother, father, and two teenage children scrambled to safety. I was one of the on-call detectives uh, that morning, so I responded. Several things immediately raised Detective Mifflin's suspicions. Investigators found a gas can that did not belong to the homeowner. You could smell gasoline all around the outside of the home. When they check the gas meter, it raises a huge red flag. Insulation wrapped around the meter had been cut away. Gasoline had been poured on the meter area. Which is where you pour the gas from that spot to another location start another fire. All those were indications that this is an arson. Detective Mifflin wants answers. He approaches the homeowner who introduces himself. His name 
is Scott Perk.